In this video, we're going to cover springs and see how this system is another situation where conservation of energy can be applied. So first of all, when we're looking at springs, we're generally looking at a spring attached to a mass. So in this case, I have a horizontal spring attached to a mass. Now, as you probably recall, when playing around with springs, if you compress them or stretch them, they're going to want to return to their original length. That original length of the spring is what we call the natural length. So right here, we're going to call this the natural length of the spring. And sometimes this is also called the equilibrium length. They're referring to the same thing. So the idea is that when the mass is at this position, x equals zero, such that the spring is at its natural length, the spring is not under any stresses. It's at equilibrium and it will sit there and do nothing. However, if you were to take the spring and you were to pull on it, now you're introducing a stress on the spring. And when you pull it, the spring wants to snap back and return to its equilibrium or natural length. The reason why it wants to return is because when you pull on a spring, the spring will exert what is called a restoring force. And that restoring force wants to restore equilibrium. So this is the restoring force. At the same time, if instead of pulling on the spring, you were to compress the spring, the spring wants to, again, return back to its equilibrium length. So it wants to essentially shoot back out uh, and stretch back to its original length. So here, there would be a restoring force in the opposite direction. Now, the interesting thing about these situations is that if you look at the direction of the position changing, the displacement, you'll see that when the displacement is to the right, which if we call the positive direction, then the restoring force is to the left or the negative direction. Essentially, the restoring force is always in the opposite direction of the displacement. Another thing that is important about this restoring force is that its magnitude is proportional to the displacement of the spring. Essentially, the farther you pull on the spring or the farther you compress the spring, the stronger the restoring force. And this is reflected in this equation for the restoring force, which is often referred to as Hooke's law. Right? The restoring force is equal to negative kx. Now, in this expression, k is the spring constant. The spring constant is a property of that specific springs. Different springs will have different values for the spring constant. The spring constant is essentially a measure of how stiff the spring is. So the larger the value of k, the harder it is to pull or compress the spring. And the smaller the value of k, the looser the spring is and the easier it is to stretch it out or compress it. x is displacement. So what you can see from this equation is that displacement, we know as a vector, has a direction. It's, the equation has the restoring force as negative kx. So the restoring force with the negative sign is always going to be in the opposite direction of displacement. And since k is a constant, we can see that the restoring force is directly proportional to displacement. So that explains uh, these restoring forces we saw in these situations where you stretch or you compress the spring. Another important thing to know about springs is that you can take a spring and you can compress it and you can hold it there for however long you want. But at any point you let go of the spring, it shoots out, right? It just pops back to its equilibrium length. And that essentially shows that the spring is capable of storing potential energy. We call this elastic potential energy, and it's equal to 1 half kx squared. So k and x are the same, the spring constant and the displacement. And here you can see that the potential energy stored in the spring is directly proportional to the displacement squared. All right. Now, so far, I've mostly been considering the spring just getting pulled or getting compressed and wanting to return back to its equilibrium length. But when you take a spring and you pull on it and you let go, 
it will exhibit harmonic motion. It will oscillate back and forth between the amplitude, negative A to A. And as it oscillates back and forth, energy is being converted from one form to another. When you're at the amplitude, you have a lot of potential energy, right? Large displacement, lots of potential energy. As it returns back to its equilibrium length, you're losing potential energy. So that potential energy is getting converted to kinetic energy. And since it has a lot of kinetic energy in the middle, it's going to keep moving to negative A, the other amplitude. And as it moves to that amplitude, it's going to slow down and that kinetic energy gets converted to potential energy. And then it's gonna go backwards and the process just repeats itself over and over again. So over here, we can look at the dynamics of the spring as it oscillates back and forth between its amplitude, negative A to A. And as I mentioned, potential energy is, <clears throat> potential energy is directly proportional to displacement. So at x equals zero, there is no displacement, so there is also no potential energy. When you're at either amplitudes, that's the maximum displacement. At the maximum displacement, you're going to have maximum potential energy. As the spring moves from either amplitudes towards the center, all of the potential energy is lost. And it doesn't just disappear. Again, energy cannot be created or destroyed. So that potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. So that tells us when the spring passes its equilibrium point during its oscillation, right at the equilibrium point, it has maximum kinetic energy. And as it moves towards the amplitudes, that kinetic energy gets converted back to potential energy. So all along this process, you have this process of potential energy turning to kinetic energy and back and forth over and over again. Now, as a consequence of this, the kinetic energy depends on the speed of the object attached to the spring. So at either amplitudes, if you have no kinetic energy, you also have no speed. And at equilibrium, you have maximum kinetic energy, so you also have maximum speed. All right, so now let's take a look at a practice problem. Here, we're told that a spring oscillating back and forth with an amplitude of A has a maximum speed of X. We want to know what is the maximum speed of the same spring if the amplitude were doubled to 2A. So essentially before, when it was oscillating back and forth between A and negative A, its maximum speed is equal to X. If you now double the amplitude, so now it's oscillating over a much greater distance, what will the maximum speed be now? To figure out this question, we need to know how does the speed of the spring, the maximum speed, depend on amplitude? And here, conservation of energy is very helpful. We can consider, for instance, the total energy at two different points. So the two points I want to consider is where we have maximum speed, that would be at x equals zero, in a situation where we have maximum potential energy. So where the potential energy is dependent on the amplitude, which could be at A or negative A. Either, both, both works. So let's say in this case, we just go with A. So at x equals zero, all we have is kinetic energy. And we know this is the maximum kinetic energy our system can have. At x equals A, we have the maximum potential energy. So the kinetic energy, this is still one half mv squared, except it's not just any speed, it's the maximum speed squared. Potential energy is one half kx squared, but here the displacement is equal to the amplitude. So instead of one half kx squared, this is one half ka squared. And what we can see in this expression is that there's a one half on both sides, so we can cross those out. So that will leave us with mv max squared equals ka squared. So to solve for the speed, I'll divide by the mass. So I'll have v max squared is equal to ka squared over m. And then to solve for the maximum speed, I'll take the square root of both sides. So I get the square root of ka squared over m.
Now in this case, since the amplitude is squared, I can pull that out of the square root. So that will tell me that the maximum speed is equal to a root k over m. And from this expression, this tells me that the maximum speed is directly proportional to the amplitude. So if I were to double the amplitude, that would double the maximum speed. So if my maximum speed before was x, when I double the amplitude, the maximum speed will now be twice that value. It will be equal to 2x. All right, so that's how springs work. And the important part here is to understand how the system can be used to demonstrate conservation of energy.